Hello everyone. Thank you for watching Edupedia World videos. In this video, we learn about buffering database tables. So, in SAP performance tuning, okay, so buffering the tables which are required plays an important role. So, we will see like what is buffering. Buffering a table improves the performance when accessing the data records contained in the table. The table buffer reside locally on each application server in the system. The data of the buffered tables can thus be accessed directly from the buffer of the application server. This avoids the time consuming process of accessing the database. So when we say buffering, buffering means the, the table is kept inside the, the shared memory of the application server. Okay, every application server in a city system has n number of instances and every instance has its own memory. So, when we say buffering, a table is buffered, the table is kept in the application server. Okay, so when we want to access something from the table, it is very easy to access the table which is in the buffer rather than the table which is residing in the database. Buffering is particularly important in client-server environments as it takes considerably longer to access a table with the network than it does to access a table that is buffered locally. Depending on the network load, this factor can lie between 10 to 100. So that's what. So when we have a client-server environments, when we have a distributed system, okay, so buffering, it, it gives a lot of advantage. Okay, so every call to the database is expensive. It depends on the network. Okay, it is time consuming. When the buffer is inside the instance, it is quite easier. So, this is the application server and this is the database. So, you run some web program which has some select statement. Okay, so you have the R3 table buffer here. So, the database interface in the work process. Okay, it checks if the contents are there in the table buffer of the application server. If it's not there, then it will have to access the database and get the data. Okay. So, when an SAP system is newly started and when you run a program for the first time on the application server, it has to get the value from the database. There is no other choice. So, once it fetches the value from the database, then next time it will put that particular table in the buffer of the application server okay so the further calls are made from the buffer and not from the database okay so that's how buffering works and uh, in the next couple of videos okay we'll learn more about buffer then we'll see like which tables okay can be buffered which are not buffered okay so we have to enable buffering for the tables Okay, whether it's buffered or whether it can be buffered or not. If a program accesses the data of a buffered table, the database interface determines whether this data is in the buffer of the application server. If this is the case, the data is directly read from the buffer. If the data is not in the buffer of the application server, it is read from the database and loaded into the buffer. The next access to this data can then use the buffer. So as I said before, for the first time it has to access the database. Okay. So next time it will get that data and it will put it in the buffer and from the second access and so on, the buffer is read and calls to the database are not done. Okay. So when you run a program, Okay, program reads the data from buffer table that is not yet in the buffer. So the first time it reads from the database, then it puts the value into the buffer and it gets the data. Now, every application server instance in the SAP system has its own buffer. So when you run a program for the first time from any of the application server, the program is the data is fetched from the database. Okay, and the the table is kept in that particular application server only okay so when you again run that program from a different application server that will have to access the database so 
the buffers are specific to the application servers okay each application server has its own table buffer now how are the local buffers synchronized now because you have n number of instances you have n number of buffers okay if you read the data that's okay but if you make any changes to the data okay then i have read uh, say we have instance 1 and 2 from instance 1 i have executed the program now the, the data is the table is kept in the buffer of instance 1 now similarly when it's accessed from server 2 from the first time so the data is the table is kept in the buffer of server 2 now if server 1 will make some changes it will make in its buffer in the database but server 2 will still access the buffer which has the old data contents so there should be some synchronization among these buffers okay so a buffer table is generally read on all application servers and held in the buffer there if a program changes the data contained in a table on an application server this is noted in the log table by the database interface that's why now when changes are made on one particular application server to the table okay so the buffer plus the database is updated of that instance but the other application servers have their own buffers which have the old data okay so when they will read that data they will still get the old values right so that's why a synchronization program runs okay so whenever the buffer of any instance gets updated it's recorded in the log table okay in the next videos we will see what is that log table okay the buffers uh, it's noted in the log table of the database inter interface the buffers still have the old status on the on all the other application servers so then the program might read obsolete data that's why a synchronization mechanism runs at fixed time interval usually every one or two minutes the log table is read and the buffer contents that were changed by the other servers are invalidated in the next axis the data of the invalidated tables is directly read from the database and updated in the buffer so that's why when a change is done to a table in the buffer in any of the application servers it records in the log table okay so a synchronization mechanism it runs for every fixed interval of time it can be every few seconds or one or two minutes then what happens the data in the other buffers are invalidated okay they are washed away so next time when they read the when they want the particular table they will read from the database which has the updated values and then they put it in their buffers again okay so that's why the buffers have to be synchronized when we talk about buffering of tables when we have a distributed environment where we have n number of application servers when changes are made from a particular application server to a table only that table with the data only that table in that instance in that buffer of that instance are only updated and the database the other buffers of other instances have old data okay so to synchronize the data you should have some synchronized synchronization mechanism which runs periodically okay so that's why when buffer tables of an instance are updated they record in a special table okay the log table where they say like from instance one this table is changed so when this synchronization program runs it will check that table oh so those changes are made in this table from that particular application server so all the application servers the table and all the application servers is invalidated is wiped off and they will have to access the database to get the updated data values now displacement if more space is required in the buffer due to new data the data that has not been accessed for long time is longest time is displayed so when the buffer space is becoming less so whatever data which has not been accessed since a long time is displays it's removed the data is displaced asynchronously at certain times that are defined dynamically by buffer access the data is only displaced if at this time the free space in the buffer is less than a given value or if the access quality is not good enough so displacement occurs when the free space is less say like the buffer 
okay the empty space in the buffer of an application server is it, it reaches like 10 percent so then the the tables which are not accessed for a long time are removed and similarly if the buffer quality okay we have something known as the buffer quality okay buffer quality means the same database calls by the same database calls plus the database calls which are made when a program wants some data from a table okay so it has okay so it has to be called to the database but it's there in the buffer okay so that is one same database call by the same database call by the total number of calls okay say like 10 accesses have to be made out of 10 3 3 hits were there in the buffer so 3 by 10 is the buffer quality like that okay so if the quality is also not good, good enough then the data is displaced from the buffer the other one is resetting the table buffers you can reset the table buffers on the corresponding application servers by entering this command this transaction dollar tab in the command field all the data in the buffer is invalidated so if you run dollar tab is the transaction code dollar tab if you run this transaction then in that particular application server the table buffer the entire table buffer is cleaned only use this command if inconsistencies occurred in the buffer it can take several hours to fill the buffers in large systems performance is considerably reduced during this time so don't please don't run this transaction okay a dollar tab as in when we want okay you should only run this whenever required okay once if you erase the table buffer on an application server the performance will degrade okay it will take so much time again to load the table buffers okay so this is not a command to be used now and then it should be used very carefully and only when required in emergency purposes so buffering means like keeping the contents of the table in the buffer of the application server why this is done to to improve the performance to reduce the time okay every call to the database is expensive too so to cut short that database calls we are using buffers no uh, that's what first time when it's run it's brought from the database and it's kept into the table buffer of the application server then we have learned about this synchronization because in a distributed environment we have n number of instances okay changes made to the table buffers on one instance have to be synchronized with all other buffers on the other instances also okay so for that periodically as the synchronization mechanism is there which runs periodically okay to synchronize this uh, to synchronize the buffers across all application servers then we have studied about displacement whenever the quality of the buffer is less or whenever there is less free space in the buffer the the, the tables which are not accessed since long time are displaced okay and the other one is resetting the table buffers so dollar tab is the command is the transaction which is used to reset the table buffer so if you if you run this command from on one instance so only that table buffer of that application server is reset okay not not the table buffers of other application servers you have to run this command on each application server okay because the buffers are specific to the application servers but this is very dangerous okay only whenever it's really required whenever there are errors some buffer got corrupted then only we have to run this command otherwise uh, it's suggested not to run this command because once the table buffer is reset it will take really lot of time to build the buffer again okay and during that time performance is degraded okay so this is about buffering of database tables in the next couple of videos we'll learn more about more details about uh, which tables are to be buffered okay so how this uh, synchronization program works okay and all those things and the restrictions on buffering okay thank you